Sometimes I agree with my teacher and sometimes I don't. And it's nice to sort of say what I think about it and not just always what other people do. It's nice to have sort of like your own opinion about something. The pupil voice is just one element of a new teaching technique called lesson study. Is there anything there that you felt that would have helped you in any way? Examples of persuasive writing it in front of you? It might have been good to, like, in our pairs, swap our work so we could see what we'd done. Right, so if you'd have had both and worked on each other's... and just, yeah. yeah, that's a really good idea, actually. This whole model of lesson study really is, is giving us a language in which to talk about the, uh, the learning and the pedagogy that, that goes on in school, um, other than just the sort of superficial, how did your lesson go today kind of thing. Teachers at Fountains Primary School near Harrogate are using lesson study, part of the renewed primary framework, to improve pupils' writing. So how does it work? The technique has a clear structure. Firstly, teachers meet as a group to decide a focus. Today, it's literacy. Secondly, the group splits into pairs of teachers who plan the lesson, observe each other, and interview pupils to get their feedback. Thirdly, the pair of teachers feedback their observation results, and finally, the group reconvenes to evaluate. With one lesson study cycle recently completed, the school are keen to decide the focus of their next one. Are we all happy to carry on with the curriculum target, the sentence construction? Because it's been really powerful, I think, to, to look at that in a bit more detail. And we only concentrated on the, 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 the lower attaining children. Do you think it's a good idea if we now move on to the higher attainers? Yeah. That's a good idea. I think so, because the, the data is still showing that that's the area of weakness, isn't it? Yeah. With, yeah. Although it's, uh, it's obviously improved through the, the mm. work that we've been doing. Mm. We looked at our data, we looked particularly at writing. We'd done a lot of very detailed analysis of the, the bands and strands throughout the school and one thing that came out very clearly was sentence structure uh, seemed to be the weaker area. So having identified that, it was a case of narrowing that down to the specific objectives. What do we need to teach our children to be able to get them to that next level? This uh, time I want to look at the uh, year six progression into year seven, really thinking about their use of language overall, but also in in terms of the overall balance of the writing. The primary framework uh, really helps us in the planning. It's very easy in that document to see how those objectives move from year to year and what the children need to do. For their first lesson study, staff decided to pair up across the key stages. Last time we paired up with as much variety as we could, didn't we really? So are we going to stick to the same pairings? I certainly found that last time that pairing was really, really useful. I um, don't often get the chance to be uh, peer assessed by um, a teacher who's um, primarily looking at, at infants, so that sort of change of perspective was really useful mm. for me. Excellent, so we need to break into pairs to do that, that yes. planning, really. First to plan is Year 5-6 teacher Stuart Ellis with Year 1-2 teacher Jill Pemberton. Um, so really I, I was looking at how I could uh, really push on my high retaining children. Donna also, who is a real high flyer, mm. I thought again that sort of peer working with, with somebody else, I've actually uh, linked her up with Amber. And Amber, yeah. um, again, enjoys writing, but really does need to develop her skills in terms of how she's mm. constructing her sentences. So I thought that they'd make a really mm. good pair together. Mm. I think I'll be looking there at whether one child dominates the other in the pairings, yes. because as you haven't done that before, that's a mm. bit more of an open-ended thing to be doing. <laughs> Um, Next, it's the turn of reception yeah. teacher Georgina Ray and Year 3-4 teacher Rachel Bush. Right, I want to focus on punctuation and sentence construction. These are the children that, yes, they still need to be guided, but often I can see them away working, mm -hmm. but it'll be interesting for us both to watch that process. And even though I'm guiding them, I'd like to see what they can do and what kind of talking they're doing between themselves mm -hmm. and how that feeds into their final piece of writing. Lessons are then peer assessed. So your activity really is to look at the writing that you've done and to assess that against the success criteria and try together to come up with a revised draft. Can I just ask what improvement you've made so far? Well, a uh, connective there at the beginning of the sentence. Right, so is that what sort of connective would you say that is? Um, like 
effective. Yeah. Effective. It's, a, it's effective, yes. And it's also a bit like a, um, it's a cause and effect, isn't it? It's the effect. As a result is like a, an effect of something happening, isn't it? Yeah. Well done. That's a really good start. Well done. What you need to do is to join those sentences together and add some more detail, make it more interesting. You know, you instantly said, why did the teacher panic? Because the fire alarm went off, OK? So you're just going to focus on maybe extending those sentences add into a paragraph, adding more detail, using these techniques here to make it more interesting than the light went out, the teacher started to panic. Oh, really good, because the light went off and then something... And the teacher started And then something lit up the room, but not the light. Alyssa, would you read yours out, please? Think about one compliment one thing to improve on, so listen carefully. The bright yellow light quickly turned off and all the children started to scream loudly. The tall, thin teacher started to panic as fire rushed into the classroom. Get outside, get outside, she cried at the top of her voice, trying to pull the squealing children out of the room. Super. Co one compliment? I think it was good because she, was, she described the light and how the teacher was trying to get them out of the classroom when the fire came in. Anything that she, you felt she could have improved on, Sophie? She put, cried the teacher, she could have put a better word to... Yeah, so when we've said said is banned, she could have maybe used a more complicated word, yeah, OK? Pupils are given their chance to feed back on the lesson. How did you feel generally working in pairs? With pairs, you can get more ideas and, and like, mix ideas together yeah, so they're have... better. Did you both have just one piece of work? or? Yeah. OK, how yeah. do you feel about that? Would you have liked both? Uh, no, I like, like, sharing. So I then you could just look at one piece yeah. of work right. and then you don't it. know. Because then if you had to, you'd be, like, looking over. OK. I was a little bit nervous about that to start with in terms of how I would feel, particularly if things didn't go very well or the feedback from the children wasn't great. Um, but actually, I think within our school here, we've tried to develop that open culture where you know, we can share successes as well as failures and learn from it and move forward. And so from that point of view, there was really nothing okay. to fear. Okay. I'm just going to ask you some questions <laughs> about the session that you've just had. So talking to each other, was that the best thing about it, really? Being able yeah. to, to talk yeah. to your friends? Because yeah. in class, when we're doing a piece of writing work, we'd have to do it on our own. But this session, we were allowed to talk so we could get ideas off for our friends. Is there anything that you thought didn't work? Mrs Bush said that we were, we were allowed to talk and then everyone started just writing and I kind of wanted to talk. Mm -hmm. And then I felt, that, I, I felt that some people didn't want to, so I didn't really want to disturb them. I chose to interview the children as a group this time because for the last lesson study, I'd taken the children indi individually afterwards um, some of the children were quite reluctant to give answers. It was somebody different that they don't generally work with, mm -hmm. and they were quite sort of short with their answers. They didn't, you know, develop them at all. But with taking them as a group, it had huge impact on the amount that they said about the lesson. Sophie, I think that sometimes if Mrs. Bush asks for comments, then say only like two people put your hand, their hand up and then she asked for something that you could improve on and like everyone else puts their hand up, it would be quite disturbing so, um, but it can be useful I think you've got to be prepared that, um, you know maybe your techniques aren't working or that style isn't working and be happy to receive information from the children through your partner saying this didn't work or they need this or this is what they felt and being able to respond to that and not taking that personally but thinking all right this is my next step they need this that i'm going to provide it for them pairs then feed back to each other they all commented on the uh connective display they said they make use of that a lot yep. and they very much liked having those cards they thought they they were really useful and i did notice that they used them as a systematic way to tick off, well, we've done this one, let's have a look for this next one, Lloyd, right. which was excellent. So it sounds like it might be worthwhile producing those type of success criteria cards for other writing genres, really. The problem with formal lesson observations is that it focuses very much on giving teachers a level. Mm. And it's a little bit like when you uh, give feedback to children on their work. 
if you put a grade on it, all they look at is the grade. Mm. And I think that's um, very much how teachers see it when they see whether you've been good or outstanding or, or inadequate or satisfactory or whatever. Mm. Um, whereas this process is much more about constructive dialogue and feedback mm. that actually gives you something to work at. The children said that they they found that sometimes before the session they'd just put commas and things anywhere. But they said that really in that session it helped them to focus on where they needed to be. Um, and you were giving lots of input and helping yeah. them to, that's to just good. check their work. Yeah, that's good, because I actually thought on that bit, I wondered whether they were just saying that because that's what I wanted to hear. But if they've said that to you, then that's reassuring. I think that most lessons have got better since the last interview because of all the the things we've said about um, the lessons, it's just made it a lot better. I didn't like English uh, um, much last time and then when we did the interview, interview, I liked it more. I feel happy now and I felt good about doing the interview once you've actually said it to a teacher. I think it was Sophie who said that the thing that she would have liked would be separating the time to talk from the actual writing time. Yeah because she was quite keen to, to talk to somebody about it and share some ideas. But everybody else, sort of, like you said in they the session, they went straight, straight down. down to the work. <laughs> yeah. So for her yeah. particularly, it would have been nice to say, right, you've got two minutes talking time or whatever. Mm. Everybody has to talk you know, to each other and share ideas and then have the five minutes afterwards. Yeah. Ultimately, we're here for the children and it's the children's, not judgments, but their perception of that process that's important. And to get that directly from them, who you are working with. Okay the whole thing becomes more effective because you're listening to them and basing future work based on what works for these particular children. And I think that's why it's an ongoing process. It's not saying, well, you know, I've taught a lesson however many years ago and this worked well then. You're actually identifying with the children you're working with at hand. All findings are pulled together and the evaluations begin. It was useful to find out what the children thought of it and all of them found it really helpful to have um, the prompts right in front of them in terms of um, the success criteria. Uh, so that was a really helpful thing that's made me think that I would probably want to create those sorts of prompt cards for all the different writing genres which would be helpful for them to have right in front of them rather than just being up on the board which is at a distance. I've had um, plenty of assessments in terms of my teaching as I've developed as a teacher but it's always felt very much like you've either passed or failed an exam. Whereas with the lesson study, um, it's just as constructive, but it's more so because uh, you're actually getting everybody's feedback and you feel that you can do something with that and together um, improve the teaching and learning for all the children. In terms of organisation, you do have to be a little bit creative. In our two cycles, we've had one person who's come in on supply for us to free up people to be able to take part in, in that lesson study. And each one has been... Uh, if effectively one day's supply for us in our small setting. Um, so, so it's been a very cost effective uh, way of, of delivering that CPD. Because of the benefits, I think we've, we would really say no if, it, if it's a question of choosing between lesson observations and the lesson studies, I think we would go for the lesson studies every time. Yes.